A pitcher, however, could be a standard starter. And this ball hit toward the right center gap. And Ben Yamel has done it again. He's Superman. How's it going, everyone? The Pittsburgh Pirates are officially 5-4 and four on the season. And as a result, they are currently a little bit above 500. In this video, we're going to be breaking down what exactly happened during the home series against the Washington Nationals. In game one of the series on April 14th, right-handed pitcher JT Brubaker took the mound for a second start against right-handed pitching prospect. Prospect Yohan Adon for the Washington Nationals, and the Pirates won game one of the series 9-4. In JT Brubaker's start, he had some minor struggles, but he was able to bounce back in a big way. In four innings pitched, he struck out five batters, walked four, gave up four earned runs, and five hits. One of the only downsides of his performance was that he allowed three runs to score early on in the game in the first. The walks could be improved, but it's still early on in the season for him to improve on his control. Our bullpen pitched very well this game. Anthony Banda, Ronzi Contreras, and Aaron Fletcher pitched to a combined 4.3 scoreless innings. Contreras was the star on the pitching side of things, striking out five batters, only walking one in three scoreless innings. Our offense exploded onto the scene, hitting for a combined 14 hits and walked eight times against the Nationals. Daniel Vogelbach was the star of the game in the leadoff spot, going four for six with two home runs and two RBIs. And Brian Reynolds continued to have a solid season, going two for four with a home run and two RBIs. Before the game, star outfielder Brian Reynolds signed a contract extension with the Pittsburgh Pirates. That runs until he hits free agency in 2025, buying out his remaining arbitration years. In game two of the series on the 15th, right-handed pitcher Mitch Keller took on right-handed pitcher Eric Fetty, losing game two, seven to two, a much worse outing for the team. Mitch Keller struggled again in his second outing of the season. In 3.2 innings pitched, he struck out four, walked three, and allowed four runs to score. Not the greatest outing. Pirates fans are expecting a lot more out of him, and he struggled with his control of his off-speed pitches in this game, and his confidence seemed very shot compared to his successful 2022 spring campaign. Many Pirates fans are getting fed up with the Mitch Keller experiment, calling for the Pirates to stop and bench him outright. Out of the bullpen, Miguel Yucure struggled through three innings pitched, walking two batters and allowing three runs to score. Our offense was virtually non-existent, only putting up five hits in nine innings. Hoy Park was the only one that put up two RBIs in the game. It was an absolute embarrassing outing for the Pittsburgh Pirates offense. In game three of the series, right-handed pitcher Bryce Wilson took on left-handed pitcher Josh Rogers to win game three, six to four. In 4.1 innings pitched, he struck out two batters, walked three, and allowed two runs to score, including a home run from Juan Soto. Just like the pitchers early on in the video, control could definitely be a lot better. Our bullpen pitched a little bit better this game compared to the previous game. Our offense went off again, especially from utility player Michael Chavis, who hit three for four on the day with an RBI triple. And watch out, Washington, it's nap time. <laughs> Catcher Andrew Knapp filled in for the injured Roberto Perez and had a one for four day with two RBIs, a very solid outing for a catcher not known for his hitting. One of the most impressive feats this game was seeing our fielding improve immensely. Outfielder Ben Gamble showed some great diving plays while roaming in the outfield this game, catching two hard hit balls with ease, looking like Superman. In game four of the series on the 17th, veteran left-handed pitcher Jose Quintana took on fellow left-handed pitcher veteran Patrick Corbin, winning the game 5-3, to three, leading to the Pittsburgh Pirates winning the series against the Nationals. In four innings pitched, Quintana struck out two batters, walked three, and allowed three earned runs. The bullpen, however, continued to be lights out. Will Crow, Heath Hembry, and David Bednar combined for four and two-thirds scoreless innings. David Bednar received his first save of the season and is looking to gain more moving forward. Offensively, it was a very close game, and the Pirates were able to come back after a 3-0 deficit. Michael Chavis and Ben Gamble hit 2-4 for four on the day with an RBI single each. One of the greatest plays in the field was watching former Pirates first baseman Josh Bell get thrown out at home plate on a relay throw by Ben Gamble and Diego Castillo. What an absolute throw from this young buck. After watching this series against the Washington Nationals, what can Pirates fans take away from this outing? One of our biggest issues that I identified in this series was that the offense is very hit or miss. Sometimes it can be very hot or sometimes it can be very cold. We need our offense to make up for our very mediocre pitching that we've had this season. So far this series, Pirates starters have given up multiple earned runs in the first few innings of work alone. Something that's very alarming to me is that none of our pitchers were able to make it past four innings of work. Typically for a starter, I would want my starter to at least go five to six innings, but these pitchers have been struggling immensely ever since starting the season. Our offense needs to strike early and strike hard. And as a result of that, we will be able to hopefully win games moving forward. Our pitching will 
in that one of those games, our offense needs to be able to take control if we want to be at least somewhat competitive moving forward. Infielder Cole Tucker is struggling immensely at the major league level. I don't think that he's earned to be our everyday second baseman. I think that it needs to go to infield prospect Diego Castillo. He's shown a lot more promise. He's hitting for high average, getting on base, and I think moving forward, he needs to be our guy of the future. One of the biggest surprises on our team so far this season has been infielder Michael Chavis. Holy cow, this guy has shown a lot of power potential, extra base hits. I just love seeing him play, so I wouldn't be surprised if he takes the starting first base job from guys like Daniel Vogelbach and Yoshi Tsutsugo, both of whom are free agents after this year. Will Crow has been absolutely lights out to start the season. In seven innings pitched, currently he's posting up a 0.00 ERA. He struck out nine batters. What is this guy doing? I can't wait to see him continue his success. One of the biggest disappointments this season is seeing starting pitchers Mitch Keller and Bryce Wilson struggle immensely, especially Mitch Keller. I've been rooting for Mitch Keller ever since 2019. I've wanted him to start succeeding. He has insane stuff that can make him a quality ace pitcher, but the biggest downside for him is just not being able to harness his pitches very well. His control is off the rails, especially on his off-speed pitches. His confidence is shot. If these guys continue to struggle early on in the season, I wouldn't be surprised if the organization decides to start players like Ronzi Contreras, Max Kranich, and Miguel Yujure in the starting rotation to get young quality arms some innings in the starting rotation. On the bright side of things, the Pittsburgh Pirates are now officially 5-4 and four on the season, and we are currently looking forward to our division rival series against the Milwaukee Brewers. Currently for the NL Central standings, the Pittsburgh Pirates are tied for second place with the Chicago Cubs. We're currently 0.5 games away from becoming the number one team in the division. For the short term, it's been pretty good being able to see the Pirates win games for once, but I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be sustainable moving forward for the team. We are expected to finish well below 500 as one of the worst teams in the league. Hopefully this team continues to surprise me and maybe we'll end up finishing higher than I expect in the division. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like to show me that you are wanting more content like this on the channel. And let me know in the comments below, who do you think should be starting in the rotation for the team? We've had a lot of struggles on the starting pitcher side of things. With that being said, let's go Bucks.